As events on the 2013 ASP World Tour unfold, much is at stake. Heats that are shaping the outcome of the World Championship title race. Heats that will chart the upward rise, the occasional dip, or the downward spiral of a surfer's career. The line separating triumph from despair is fine. The balance between winning and losing, delicate. Heat Redux will analyze these heats and break down those moments where everything is on the line. And I'd heard the crowd blow up and Miguel was like pale white, just like. <gasps> you can watch that air a hundred times and it still doesn't look real. In the end, what matters most after the scores have dropped and the cheers have died away is which surfer gets to pull on a jersey for the next heat. Which surfer ultimately gets the chance at taking the biggest prize? Both these guys had in their own minds, they, they probably thought that if they won that semi, they were going to win the final. The Jordy Smith versus Adriano D'Souza semifinal for this year's Rip Curl Bells Beach contest would fit into the mold of classic buzzer beater, a true nail biter. An invigorated Smith was having a run at this event that had fans and media talking about the resurgence of the South African talent, a reawakening of the lion. But the fighter in D'Souza was there for all to see in its rawest form. The man from the dusty streets of Sao Paulo was not going down without a fight. Smith made a blistering start, setting out a stall with a 9.53. So relaxed out there, and just throwing massive rail, and again, just burying it at the top half of the wave, lining it up again, just super fluid, and just throwing that considerable bulk of his around, straight up at the lip. Jeez. Gnarly finish there for, uh, for Geordie Smith. Adriano D'Souza replied with a 9.27. This is a sick looking insider for Adriano. Great bottom turn. Oh. Another big jam under the lip to finish. And that way for Adriano looked nuts. D'Souza then piled on the pressure, finding a wave that allowed him a vertical assault, giving him a score of 9.17. Straight up at the lip. Big vertical uh, bash. That is hard to do here today. There are not that many sections for vertical turns. And he has found an absolute diamond out here. And Jordy's going to have to do a little bit of uh, something extra now. I think Adriano's just uh, hammered the nail in. With two and a half minutes left, Smith had his back to the wall, needing a score of 8.91. By the time the buzzer went, both surfers had given it their all and had left everything in the lineup. With the judges left with a huge decision, the surfers made their way to the beach, still not sure who had won. It's an 8.87. An 8.87, eight eight not enough. hundredths of a point short. For D'Souza, this was just one big moment in his path to glory. He went on to the final, won the contest, and got to ring the famous bell. The story to the semi-final goes back a few years. In 2009, Smith and D'Souza would trade waves on a team trip to Indonesia. On a performance camp in the Mentawais, the surfers were on a mission to hone their skills as high-performance world tour surfers who could make a legitimate challenge for the world title. Smith was on top of the world as a star of surf films and was quickly establishing himself as one of the top few surfers on the planet capable of mixing free surfing for movies, together with rising to the very top of the ASP rankings. The climax of the trip was when he landed the elusive Rodeo Clown. The resulting video clip would go on to achieve millions of online hits. I call myself a surfer, but that was a completely different sport. Sort of like a, a crossbreed of snowboarding, skating and surfing. For Adriano D'Souza, the trip would serve as both inspiration and training camp. He would get the chance to work with elite coaches and look to find that difference needed to jump from top five finisher to potential first ever Brazilian world champ. That last combo was so much cleaner. A really sharp, eh? Like there was no flat section, no double pump. It was just that beautiful transition. That was sick. That was really nice. But fate finds a way of flicking flies in the ointment. At the Billabong Pro Tahiti in 2011, Jordy Smith took off on a wave at the legendary Chopu that closed out. The injury sustained to his ribs had a longer lasting effect than just a forced rest period for rehabilitation. Jordy, yeah, I think oh, you're right, pain, Adam. Bro. He is not moving. It would mark the start of what some surf pundits would call a slump. 
Certainly, the stellar rise was on pause for the time being. Smith would finish 7th on the 2011 ASP World Tour, and at the end of 2012, he was 12th. Meanwhile, D'Souza's consistency was paying off. A hard-working surfer known for his fierce competitive spirit, D'Souza was claiming event titles and becoming a habitual top five ranked surfer. He also has a love of surfing history, and no more so is this reflected than his respect for Bells Beach and the famous contest there, the Rip Curl Pro. Coming into its 30th year at the 2013 Bells Beach event, both surfers had points to prove and tour campaigns to fire up, but the task would not be simple. Bells is not an easy event to win. It favours guys that have done a lot of time out there. It's got this aura about it, you know, it's kind of like a mecca. And Bells is just like one of those waves. It's just like Shane Dorian said years ago, the kooks never won Bells. You know, I saw the pressures of round three on the Gold Coast against Trav Logie. He kind of knew deep down that he was surfing the best and that Bells was his to win. D'Souza had been on an impressive run, cutting a swathe through some of the best surfers on the tour. And suddenly, all those guys are all gone. Mick, Joel, Kelly, they're out of the draw. So suddenly, Be Bells is there on finals day to be won. As the semi-final got underway, both surfers would get on rail and trade nine-point rides to open their accounts. It was Smith who would post the first score in the excellent range, as he put the foot down using his sizable frame to bury the rail and earn a 9.53. In this nice steep part of the wave here, he hooked it well, but then it, it kind of went quite flat here. And I mean, this was a big score. I probably, at the time, I didn't think it was going to be as high because he didn't really connect with that last section as cleanly as he could have. I mean, it was a, an epic start to that heat. D'Souza's response would be some intense rail surfing with outstanding turns under the lip. The score was 9.27. Adriano surfed, you know, you know, above his league, he, was, he really brought everything he had to, to each wave and um, I think that was, that was the difference, you know, he, uh, he chose the right waves in that heat and uh, he got lucky. <laughs> I think I made my, uh, my strategy to put a pressure on him. Yeah, I was really hunting for, for something big and I saw the wave coming through and I said, oh, this is a really good opportunity for me to, to do exactly what I need. You know, and then I just attacked the wave on a critical. As soon as I realized, I made it to turn as well. So, yes, yes, you know, I actually I made it right I need. This second turn that he does in this part of the wave here was really critical. And yeah, I mean, Adriano, he just, he rises to the challenge better than anyone almost. D'Souza would turn the screw with an 8.77 that started a flurry of exchanges showing how in tune both surfers were with the ocean. I got one nine and then I think I got a backup wave and I just ended up falling and uh, I think that was my mistake. You know, if I finished that wave, it would have been, you know, really high score, but um, it was a little unlucky. To pick these waves and only four of these waves will actually hit the reef on these days and for those guys to be on them, it's just, um, it's, it's incredible. It's almost like a sixth sense for them to be able to read the ocean that clearly. With five and a half minutes left on the clock, D'Souza's wave selection once more would prove to be the difference. It was D'Souza's second nine-plus wave and left Smith with it all to do. For an athlete to rise and surf above himself, like this is the best um, rail surfing Adriano has done in his career and his life, like even if it was free surfing. With two minutes, 30 seconds on the clock, Smith paddled into a good looking wave and went to work. He needed an 8.91 to take the win. I just don't think the wave had it in it, you know, for him to get that score because he surfed it pretty much perfectly. And yeah, I mean, it was so close that I think they only hit, it was less than a point. So. Bells is the big open face wave. You can't do short turns on this, these things. You've got to draw them out. You've got to draw long bottom turns. You've got to find the pocket. And uh, it was a real revelation to see Adriano surf like that. And you can see that the guy has actually thought about this, thought he knew he needed to change his surfing, and, uh, and did it, and came home with the, uh, with the result. So uh, yeah, with that two scores, putting me on a final, I was really stoked to be there, represent my country. For him to win Bells and, and that heat against Geordie and be on that global scale, like where he's that was just such a significant, not only turning point for Adriano, but also for his country and for Brazil. D'Souza went on to ultimate glory. 
he got to ring the bell he so coveted and wrote his name into the history books of surfing.